Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am Reverend Sonia Davidson, and it is my great pleasure to assist our pastor this morning in bringing you this service and his wonderful message, which we are all looking forward to. We welcome not only those persons who are here in the sanctuary, but all those persons who are on the World Wide Web. And we start this service, as we always do, with an opening affirmative prayer, so join me. We recognize the one life which is God, and to know that that life has so uniquely sculpted each one of us out of itself, even as it has projected itself into being as our teaching, as this church and as this morning service. I know that all the attributes of God are appearing in and through each one of us. As we surrender ourselves and allow this experience to be one that lifts transforms, blesses each one of us. I know that this service is that which reveals to each one of us exactly what we need to know in this moment, what we need to experience, how we need to be, so that every word that is spoken is a word of God spoken in and through each one of us, and especially and including our speaker, Reverend John. Every note that is sung is the music of the spheres finding expression through each one of us. So I know this service unfolds with effortless ease and with great fulfillment to all who participate. I give thanks that it is so and so it is. Now, this morning, our inspirational reading takes the form of a poem. And it's a poem by a Jamaican writer. And it is published on Treasure Trove on the internet. It was published January 5, 2012. And it has been an inspiration to people all over the world, but especially to women. It's called No More Smalling Up of Me. And the writer is Jean Wilson, formerly known as Jean Fairweather Wilson, for those of you who know her by that name. No more smalling up of me. No more meekly saying yes, when my heart is screaming no. No more taming of my feelings so my power won't show. No more hiding my exuberance from disapproving eyes. No more watering down myself so my spirit won't rise. No more smalling up of me, pretending I'm not here. No more running from the music and the spotlights glare. No more living in this prison, barricaded by my fears. No more turning and retreating in the face of new frontiers. Even as I am speaking, I am taking shape and form, harnessing my powers like a gathering storm. There is no obstacle so bold as to dare stand in my way. I am taking back my life, and I am doing it today. Jean Wilson. What a wonderful. And I just want to add that this has been very useful to me, Jean, in my counseling sessions. Wonderful. And our praise song this morning, All Things Praise Thee, and it's found on page two for those of you who are in the sanctuary. 
which is found on page two. The Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light, the light of the of Christ, Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our, our spiritual, spiritual community is filled with and is surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us consistently along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. And now, for the lighting of the candle, you may be seated. We light this candle for all the people of the world. May all the people be blessed. And we love you, we appreciate you, and we give thanks for you. Yes, God is blessing you now, Reverend Michael says, and we all agree together, and God is blessing you now, and so it is. No, the Temple Mission Song. The Temple of Light, the Temple of Light, the Temple of Light. We are a people with a vision, one with spirit on a mission. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and
envy those of you who can sit still during this song. Wow. <laughs> and now it's time for our announcements. The flowers this morning is lovingly arranged by Mrs. Judith Deer, and I guess it's from the garden. Hmm? Yes, her own hands. Thank you, Judith. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful. No services. Please join us on Facebook Live at our Spiritual Mind Healing Service, which is Tuesday, September 22 at 6 p.m. And every single Tuesday, there is a healing service at 6 p.m. This week, our speaker will be practitioner Carol Campbell. And we want to remind you that next week is Practitioner Sunday celebration. That is September 27th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our speaker will be our practitioner, Jennifer Livingston, with the host practitioner, Sandra Cooper. And services at the temple, we're just reminding you that you should call the office to indicate your intention to attend Sunday celebration in person. The number is 9462230. As you know, Congregants attending must wear a face mask and observe the prescribed protocols. Please remember also to maintain physical distancing, physical, and to keep your mask on after the service as you meet and greet others. If you can't bless us with your presence, you can still be with us in consciousness as services continue to be live streamed on Facebook Live. Ah, Summit 2020. This is quite an event. We hope you are saving the dates for our upcoming online conference. You have been getting emails. If you have not been, please indicate to the office. Summit 2020, it's called Reimagining the Temple of Light in a Transforming World. Again, those dates, this historical online conference, October 17 and October 30 and 31, November 6 and November 7. The formal purpose of the summit is to discover in community how we might serve and thrive together through mission-driven ministry. It will be essentially a conversation about how you can help to awaken individuals and communities in and outside our center to their spiritual magnificence and so create a Jamaica and world that works for everyone. Imagine we'll be catalysts for transformation. So first we transform ourselves and then we take it to the world. The formal purpose of the summit, we have said, right, is to take this wonderful teaching that is helping us so much to the world, to our country and the world. You will find yourself in good company when you come. Participants, will include Temple of Light members, past and present, regular Sunday service performers, students of our Science of Mind classes, leaders of affiliated churches inside and outside Jamaica, and selected private sector leaders. And when we say regular Sunday service attendees, we are also talking about those who come regularly on the world world wide wide web web so more so news, news next, next week, week in the next bulletin see you at, see you at the peak prayer support. support we continue to respond with prayer to the challenges of this special time listen to an inspiring prayer by calling our prayer line and it's you know eight seven six nine seven eight 
1167, 978 1167. And if you wish to speak in person to one of our ministers, they may be reached at 876 289 0907 from 8 a.m. to 12 midnight, and that's from Monday to Friday. You can also phone in your prayer requests into our office at 876-927-6145 or 876-946-2230. Or you can email us at templeoflight at cwjamaica.com. You may drop off your prayer requests, tithes, offerings, and set appointments for practitioner assistance. If you feel moved to support our ministry of love and light, your loving gifts may be transferred to our savings account, number 20941-20941, Bank of Nova Scotia, New Kingston branch. Viewers who join us on Facebook Live, please visit the home tag on our Facebook page and you will find the link to our PayPal donate button in the top post. If you are worshiping with us in person, there's a basket on either side of the podium in which you can place your offerings as you exist the sanctuary. This concludes our announcements. And please join us in the singing of the hymn, Pass It On. It's on page three of your program. And on the screen, if you're watching it, you will see it there. Please stand for this song. services, the message, and the message this morning by Reverend John Scott is sure to inspire and uplift, transform, and bless as it always does, and especially remember to listen out, take your pens out for the homework which he always gives. I know I call it homework. He calls it something else, and you will hear. So I invite you all to express your love, and as I invite Reverend John Scott to the podium.
Thank you, Reverend Sonia. Good morning, family. Good morning, worldwide family. Bless, welcome to our hearts. Welcome to this amazingly beautiful Sunday morning. I want to pass it on. I want the whole world to feel the warmth and the joy and the beauty of this Jamaican morning. Welcome to our hearts and welcome to our center here in Kingston, Jamaica. You want to pass it on, folks? Can I hear you say, I want to pass it on? I want to pass it on. There you go, world. You know, in 2019, a number of us were blessed to attend a course in leadership facilitated by Temple member and chair of our consciousness raising quadrant, Mrs. Andre Nemhard. Mrs. Nemhard is an internationally acclaimed expert in ontological coaching, big word. The ontological coaching is the powerful methodology for effecting change for individuals, teams, and organizations. And since then, our thriving ministry council here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living has had several interesting conversations regarding leadership and the qualities of effective leadership. The recent election of a new government here in Jamaica with the challenges of leadership that face our new prime minister and his cabinet, as well as the new opposition, has had me again thinking a lot recently about the complexities of leadership. I wonder, how did the great leaders like Marcus Garvey develop their power to inspire and influence others? And what I ask myself was the spark that they, need, they used to ignite the imagination of countless thousands of people. Jesus the way Shoah had that spark too, didn't he? I, I don't even know if he could have known that, that that influence that he had would extend throughout the centuries to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone who was exposed to that powerful message. And what was the message? The message was love one another. Not just those who are in your tribe, not just those who are in your family and your combolo and your, your next of kin, but to love all people, to love one another, and to love all life, all humanity, in such a wonderful way. And you know, my friends, that spark that great leaders have had, that have ignited the world, as we sang in our song, it only takes just one spark, just that little, to get the fire going in our hearts. And so I've titled my encouragement this morning as I call my Sunday messages, It Only Takes a Spark. If you think about it, you know, friends, everyone has influence. Am I right? You have influence whether you are aware of it or not. You are always being influential on someone. And no matter how short in stature you are, Reverend Sonia, you may, be some, you may be sure someone is always looking up to you. Incidentally, the founder of our great teaching, the science of mind, Dr. Ernest Holmes, was a short man, as we say in Jamaica. He was very short. And I was really amused, I had a good chuckle, the very first time I spoke at the chapel at Asilomar in California, where Holmes gave his famous sermon by the sea. Because I found that right underneath the lectern was a little fold-out step upon which he would, he, would, he would mount it in order to speak from that podium and to, to just ignite the whole world with the message that today we are also trying to pass on. That spark of truth, the truth that all men, all women, all life is divine, that God is in everything and in everyone. And so when you look in the mirror, just know that you are looking at God. It is God looking through your eyes at its most beautiful creation. It is so, you are so unique, you are so wonderful, you are so full of God 
that you have no idea when you walk through your life and go about your daily business just how many people you are touching. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the word influence is derived from the medieval Latin words in plus fluere, which combined mean to flow into. To flow into. So your influence your, is your ability to flow into the minds and hearts and imaginations of others. And sometimes we do it quite unconsciously, but we can also, as you know, do it quite consciously. I want you to think of your influence like a fingerprint. You actually leave it on everyone whom you touch. And just like our fingerprints, we are not often aware that we are leaving them all over the place. This makes me think of how powerful an intention we set when we affirm in this center that our mission as a spiritual community is to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone upon whom we put our fingerprint, everyone with whom we come into contact. And believe me, when you come into contact with them, you leave a print. Do? Am I right? Yes. You really might not even be aware you know, of the scope and depth of your influence, but nevertheless, you have great influence over others. I am often amazed when people meet me sometimes 20 years after having been in a training course with me and say to me things like, I will never forget that you said so and so. It completely changed my life. And I, I once in, in, was introduced to a gentleman at, a, at a, a cocktail party, and he said, oh, so you are John Scott. I said, yes. He said, I heard a lot, I've heard a lot about you. Know, my wife came to one of those training courses you did. I said, wonderful. She talks about you a lot. I said, I hope it's, she talks with love. She says, well, I can tell you one thing. From she come from that course, she started to back answer me. I said, that's wonderful. That means she has found her voice. You maybe should send me a check tomorrow morning. It is really quite amazing, the imprint that you make without even knowing. Sometimes when we exert our influence, we may be completely unaware that we could be changing the entire course of human history. On December the 1st, 1955, on a segregated bus in Montgomery, Alabama in the USA, a demure seamstress named Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white passenger simply because he was white and she was not. I doubt that she consciously thought that she was using her influence to change a nation. She was just bone weary. You know when you're just tired? And like we, said in, we would say in Jamaica, me now get up. Let me just now get up this evening. Well, that now get up, her single act sparked a 382-day bus boycott led by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which in turn ended segregation and gave voice to a dream for equality in America and indeed in the world. A new thought, thought minister, minister named, named Reverend, Reverend Kevin, Kevin Ross, Ross who is an author, author who writes for the New Thought magazine, magazine maintains that there, there are three, three ways, ways of being, of being or, a, or a leader, three qualities, three qualities if, you like, if you like, which, which you can utilize to develop your ability to influence others in, in a positive way, thereby igniting the spark of inspiration within those you meet on life's path. And I wanted to share those three qualities with you. The first quality he maintains of inspirational leaders is that they are intentional. We need to ask, what is our intention? And to set that intention every day to make a loving difference in the lives of everyone we meet. To, leave, to set an intention to leave a positive fingerprint 
on life wherever we go. And when this is your conscious stated intention, you open your mind to loving thoughts and your heart to loving ways of being, and this will inevitably flow into the consciousness of all those whom you encounter. When you are intentional, you're not rigid or inflexible in your approach. Instead, you align yourself with the divine love that is always seeking to flow through you as a blessing to your world. So I want you to begin each day this week with the intention of using your influence in a loving way. Purposefully choose to be a person who makes a positive difference in people's lives. So that's your assignment. Set your intention every morning to make a difference, to leave a positive fingerprint on everyone whom you encounter this week. And remember that you may encounter them in person or you may encounter them virtually. It's all the same. You are still leaving fingerprints. Set your intention for those fingerprints to be positive so that when people have finished interacting with you, they, they, they feel something inside them which says, yes, this was a worthwhile in interaction. I am a loving, lovable, and authentic member of life, a part of something worthwhile and beautiful and godlike and joyous. So that's the assignment. Set your intention every day. Reverend Ross describes the second quality of inspirational leaders as what he calls integral. And integral means that they have integrity. Lord, I think the world needs this more than ever today, don't you? Leaders and people who mean what they say and do what they say they will do, that are men and women of their word and whom you know you can rely on to show up the way they have said they will show up. As Don Miguel Ruiz puts it in his book, The Four Agreements, A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom, we need to be impeccable with our word. I wish I could give that book, The Four Agreements, to every politician on the planet. I think it would be just wonderful, you know. Your word, your word is your bond, my friends. When you give your word, you need to know that the world needs to know that you will keep your word. <laughs> you know, there were two little boys having a, a discussion and um, they had been to Sunday school and the Sunday school teacher had taught them about Satan. And one little boy said, you think Satan exists? He said, well, the other little one said, well, it must be like Santa. You know, remember, you know what happened? What Santa, how, who Santa Claus turned out to be? Your father. So. We don't in this teaching believe in the devil. We don't subscribe to anything that is negative. We believe that when you turn on the light, the darkness is no more and that it doesn't turn out to be anybody, not even your daddy. And not even if he didn't keep his word, as so many of them don't. But we know that the world is a better place for those fathers and those mothers and those people who are impeccable with their word. The third quality, my friends, that ignites the spark of human hearts is the ingenuity and creativity of great leaders. Perhaps this is what impresses us most about the Marcus Garveys, the Ernest Holmes, the Mohandas Gandhis, the Nelson Mandelas of this world. These great leaders are revered because they were courageous enough to use their influence to birth great ideas. And those ideas may not have been popular at the time of their birthing them, but they were courageous enough to speak their word for what they believed. It is so wonderful when you can say, I believe, and mean what you say. Next time you read our Declaration of Principles that says, 
we believe. Just think about each line that you are saying and know that it is so important that we live that belief, that that belief shows up in every facet and every relationship of our life's experience. And so my friends, my question for you this morning is, what ingenious and creative ideas have you left untested in your life? What ingenious ideas have you left untested in your community or even in your church? Our upcoming Summit 2020 is going to provide us all with a glorious opportunity to share our ideas and discover how we might serve and thrive together as a spiritual community that lives our mission to do what? Say it with me. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone with whom we come into contact. So that we are going to have a discussion on how we can individually and collectively leave our fingerprints on a world that awakens a world to its spiritual magnificence and that makes it a place that works for all. Not just everyone, which is the people, for every dog and every puss and every rat and every spider and every lizard, a world that works for all the inhabitants of this glorious planet, this beautiful blue pearl, this earth that we have chosen as a schoolroom for our expression on this plane of activity at this time in creation. What a, what a privilege it is to be alive and able to share at this time. I was saying to a friend um, over, over the last couple of weeks, there is a generation of us, I was born in 1943, I, Vaguely remember tram cars, but I was saying, you know, we are privileged to have witnessed everything from tram cars to landing on the moon to the falling of the Berlin Wall to the, the um, dismantling of apartheid. We have seen such amazing changes in human history and human destiny, haven't we? And we have been part of that journey and that, that climb up the mountain of life. And each peak in human experience has been, oh, I never thought I'd live to see this. This is wonderful. And so our summit is going to be another peak experience for the people of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, for those of us who are regular congregants coming physically to the church, but also for those people who join us on the World Wide Web for those on live stream. And as your announcements shared with you this morning, there will be um, members of the church, past and present, people who no longer come, and people who we would like to, to still come, people who have always been in our hearts. You know, I think if you have been to the Temple of Light, um, there has been a fingerprint that you have left on this center. And we too have left a fingerprint on your existence that is indelible. And so we want to share that as a people, as a community, and as a people who are working together in a world that is transforming. What a world. I mean, we're in the middle of another huge transition and huge change, and we're privileged to be a part of it. Isn't it exciting? Isn't it just, does it just send the adrenaline roaring through your veins? Wow, I'm part of this. You know, the truth is we are already people of influence. And the summit provides us with the opportunity to have this conversation on how we can use that influence to effect positive changes in our individual and collective lives. So that the fingerprint we leave is one that inspires others to want more from life, that inspires others to awaken to the truth of their being, their, what we call their spiritual magnificence. We can influence others, my friends, to seek for, find, and act from the Christ presence within themselves. And that is the whole, the whole linchpin, to remember that we are divine and that the presence of God, which is our Christhood, our sonship and our daughtership with the Almighty, with the living spirit, is our divine heritage. So that as Jean Fairweather Wilson's poem, which Reverend Sonia shared this morning in our inspirational reading, reminds us, 
there is to be no more smalling up of myself. Those days are done, my friends. There is no need to believe that you have to act small. You know, my, you know in, my, in my childhood, I used to be amazed because adults would greet each other and my father would say, how are you doing? And people would say, not as good as you. It was kind of, we kind of got taught to be self-effacing, you know? Looking at you, the better one. And I thought, even then I thought, what do I do them? You know, of course I'm as good as my auntie. Why should I say not as good as you, auntie? I'm better than she, I thought. So my friends, no more smalling up of yourself. Let us leave positive fingerprints on everyone whom we encounter. And remember, it only takes a spark. And so I have an acronym for you using spark. I hope you have paper and pencil. S, stand for something worthwhile, my friends. Don't be anti anything. Instead, be pro something, something noble, something great, something that benefits the world, something that is God-sized, you know, something big. Stand for something big. You know? There's to be no more smalling up. Just watch as God stands under your every effort and your every, in your every intention to leave a positive fingerprint. So stand for something big. We in this Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living stand for truth. P. Practice. Somebody once said to a great musician, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And he said, practice, practice, practice. So practice what you preach. This was one of the outstanding leadership qualities of our, my spiritual mother, my mentor and teacher, and the founder of this church, Reverend Dr. Elmer Lumsden. She always lived on principle. And she always said, John Dare, how you live your life is your most powerful sermon, end quote. And so at our summit 2020, this is a conversation we have to have. How can we live our message? How are we going to practice what we preach? The A of Spark stands for aspire. My friends, aspire for greatness. Everyone should have dreams and aspire for goals. And you know, whether you achieve some of the lofty ones isn't really important, but what is important is who you become. Who you become in the process. And that's what speaks volumes to those around you. So develop a reputation for being determined and committed. And as someone wise once said, strive for perfection but settle for excellence. So the A is aspire. The R is for resonate. Resonate, love, and kindness wherever you go. Anyone who has ever met the Dalai Lama always says that he just, he just exudes love and, love and kindness. And the beautiful, and the beautiful Jesus, Jesus himself says in, says in Matthew, Matthew 516, let your light so shine. So that's the key. Kindle. Kindle the light in others as you go. Let your light so shine, as Jesus said, that others may see and seek to find that light within themselves. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And where is that heaven? It's at hand. It's right here in our consciousness. So the K is for kindle. Kindle the light. Spark. Stand for something wonderful. Practice what you preach. Aspire for greatness. Resonate love and kindness. 
and kindle the light in others. Take time each day to think, say, and do something to deliberately inspire others to do more, to be more, to have more. Speak words of encouragement to others and offer a helping hand. Set your intention for every interaction to be a peak experience which sets people on fire. My friends, you are a spark for God. Can you say that with me? I am a spark for God. I am a spark for God. You are a temple of light. Say with me, I am a temple of light. I am a temple of light. And you are a center. You yourself are an emanating center for spiritual living. From you emanates all that we stand for as a spiritual community. Can you say, I am a center for spiritual living with me? I am a center for spiritual living. Your fingerprint is love. You have to say that with me. My fingerprint is love. My fingerprint is love. I'm not convinced. Let me hear it. My fingerprint is love. In fact, our fingerprints, what a collective fingerprint that is. Love, love, love. We just have it all over the world. You know, all ten, all over. Everybody we meet, we just fingerprint them up <laughs> with love. And so, on October 17, 30, and 31st, and November 6 and 7, at the summit, we're going to stand together on the mountain top of our souls and determine the way forward for this church as a community, individually and collectively. How we can live from that center of our mission to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper to love and liberate everyone with whom we come into contact? How do we leave those fingerprints on humanity? Oh my God, I'm so excited about that. Don't miss that conference. It only takes a spark. Can we stand and sing the last verse of that wonderful um, chorus? I wish for you, my friend. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I have found. You can depend on him, it matters not where you're found. I'll shout it from the mountain top, ah, oh, summit 20. I want love has come to me. I want to pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. <sighs> Namaste. Thank you, my friends. Please be seated and take a deep breath as you help me welcome. She's a little person too, but you see, it doesn't matter how little you are. Someone is always looking up to you, who is going to give us the beauty of her voice in that lovely song, I Believe, Marjorie Paris.
someone in the great star hears every word. Every time I hear a newborn baby cries or touch a smile there is always someone looking up to you and this morning Marjorie we look up to you and to your huge heart and to the fingerprint of love that you have left on our hearts this morning thank you my friends stand and say the prayer of Jamaica with me if our spark begins with stand for something let us stand for this beautiful beautiful country the Prayer of Jamaica, it's on page three of your program and on the screen, if you're watching us. Together, the radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills covers and surrounds our island Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, help, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established. And so it is. This is the sign in sign language for it is signed, sealed, and delivered. And so it is. My friends, as you are still standing, would you take your love offerings in your hands if you're in the sanctuary? And if you are watching us on, on the World Wide Web, just before you press that donate button, when you, on, when you go to the home tab on our Facebook page and go to the, don the donate button, just take your, your love offering in your hand for me and say after me. Together. Lovingly, I give. Joyfully, I receive. Be thou fruitful, increase and multiply. Bless, prosper, and enrich everyone whom you touch and replenish all of my financial affairs. Thank you, Father. And so it is. And then remain standing as we sing, Let There Be Light on Earth. Is it light today? Let there be light on earth, and yes, it begins with me. Yes, there is light on earth, the light that was meant to be.
light begins with me and it only takes a spark and so as we go from this place we bless all the gifts of time and talent and treasure that have so blessed our celebration this morning and that helps our ministry of light and love and truth to touch to heal to bless to prosper to love and liberate everyone upon whom we leave our fingerprints we set our intention to be a spark for God, to stand for good, to practice what we believe, to aspire for greatness, to resonate love and kindness, and to kindle the light wherever we go. We are so grateful that we are that spark and that it begins with each and every one of us. As this word is released to law in the certain assurance it cannot return to us void but must fulfill that whereunto it is sent because the mouth of the Lord has spoken it and we simply give thanks we truly give thanks that this is so and so it is thank you family have a God-filled week and leave your fingerprints everywhere I love you <laughs>